Odometry is a means of estimating the robot's Cartesian position based only on changes in wheel angle. This is the notation that we use. The robot's current position in the world frame, psi i, so that's x i, y i, and theta, at time k. Time k is the current time. And the relationship we'll use is that the current position is equal to the previous position plus some change. And for the odometry problem, we're going to be given the previous position, or at least some starting position. And we need to compute the change in the Cartesian coordinates. So in addition to the previous Cartesian position, we're also given a change in wheel angles. So that looks like delta phi k. And this means, so this bar is a vector. So this is for our differential drive robot with two wheels. I mean, that is a robot with two wheels. We're going to have delta phi 1 at time k and delta phi 2 at time k. And to further describe this or expand this, here's a definition for delta phi 1 at time k. So it's equal to the difference between phi 1 at time k and phi 1 at time k minus 1. So what we're doing is monitoring the wheel angle. And phi 1 at time k is how far the wheel has turned since we started watching it. That's phi 1 at time k, the current time. And phi 1 at k minus 1 is how far the wheel had turned, what the wheel angle was, um, since we started watching it at the, at the previous time. So this is how far it had gone at the previous measurement. And then delta phi at k minus 1 is how far the wheel turned between the previous measurement and the current time, or the current measurement. So this is how far the wheel had turned at the previous, you know, from the start to the previous time, or the previous measurement, and this is how far the wheel has turned from the start to the current time. So again, that's, that's the definition of delta phi 1 at k. That's how far wheel 1 has turned from the previous time to the current time. And this vector delta phi at k is made up of delta phi 1 of k, delta phi 2 of k. So we need to be either given the the angles for the wheels at the previous time and the current time, or maybe we're just given the delta phi directly, how far the wheels have turned. We'll look a little bit more at that in, in a second. I just wanted to mention that we are given the previous position, we're given the wheel angles, and then of course we're given the robot parameters so that we can come up with the C matrix and W. Given all those things, we will be able to compute this delta psi i at time k. And the way we do that is use the rotation matrix, inverse of the rotation matrix, and the change in Cartesian coordinates expressed in the robot frame, so delta psi r at time k. And the way we compute this vector, well again, delta psi r is delta xr at time k, delta yr at time k, and delta theta at time k. And we're just going to use the forward kinematics equation except instead of phi dot, we had this delta phi. So this is an approximation. Whereas the Ford kinematics, so the velocity equation was an exact equation. And this is the pseudo inverse of C, and then this vector is W times delta phi K, and then a zero vector. Rewriting all that, again, this is, um, this is the same exact equation. I've just expanded this vector to what it looks like for a differential drive robot. Okay, so this is really generic, and then this is specific to a differential drive robot. So we've got R1, delta phi 1, K, R2, delta phi 2, K, 0, 0. So that's what this vector looks like. Now that we have delta psi R at time K, that means we have delta theta K, we're able to compute the average orientation of the robot. So the average between the previous orientation and the current orientation. Again, orientation refers to the angle between the robot x-axis and the world x-axis, theta. And the reason we want this average is because we're transforming this vector into the inertial frame. 
and in order to have the most accurate estimate we want to rotate this vector about some angle in between the previous orientation and the current orientation. And that's why we use an average angle in this rotation matrix. So to summarize for odometry, to get the current pose, that is psi i at time k, we need the previous pose, which would be psi i k minus 1, the robot parameters, you know, alpha, beta, l, r, and delta phi k. And again, delta phi k, the vector, is just made up of the wheel displacements at time k, and the wheel displacements at time k are defined here. So for wheel 1, it's the difference between the wheel 1 position or angle at time k and the wheel 1 position or angle for at time k minus 1. Say instead of delta phi k, we're given the wheel position or wheel angles. I keep at time zero, the angle the wheel angles are zero radians and zero radians for wheel one and two. At time one, wheel one is at three radians, wheel two is at four radians, and at time two, wheel one has turned a total of four radians and wheel two has turned a total of seven radians. Now, in order to to perform our odometry, we're we're going to get our position estimates in increments, so we need the the displacements. So we need delta phi 1, and that's just the difference between this vector and this vector, so 3 and 4. So that means between time 0 and time 1, wheel 1 turned 3 radians and wheel 2 turned 4 radians, and we need delta phi 2, and that's the difference between this vector and this vector. That's 1 and 3. So that's saying between time 1 and time 2, wheel 1 turn 1 radian, and wheel 2 turn 3 radians. Now I will look at an example, a numerical example of odometry. And this is going to be for the robot configuration that was from an earlier video. So we have a differential drive robot. Um, the wheels are on the x-axis. Here's wheel 1 and here's wheel 2. And so here are the values for alpha and beta. We're saying that L1 is equal to L2 and R1 is equal to R2. And we got this value for the coefficient matrix. And here's W. For this example, we're going to say that L is 200 and R is 12. We are also given the Cartesian coordinates. So we're given psi i at time 0. We're given the wheel angles at time 0 and the wheel angles at time 1. And we want to find psi i at time 1. So we know at the previous time step, x value was 37, y value was negative 250, and theta was pi by 6. And then wheel 1 turned 9 or 0.9 radians, and wheel 2 turned 0.5 radians. So we want to find where the robot is now. Okay, we need to start by calculating delta phi 1, delta phi at time 1. And that's the difference between this vector at time 1 and this vector at time 0. So that's just this minus this, so we have 0.9 and 0.5. Now we can compute um, delta psi r at time 1, so how far the robot has moved in the robot frame between time 0 and time 1. And we're just going to use this equation again from the previous page. So it's the pseudo inverse of c times this vector. And when we go ahead and put plug in the numbers we have, it looks like this. So here's c and negative L and L, and then W times delta phi at time 1 looks like this, so 12 times 0 0.9, 12 times 0 0.5, and then 0, 0. And that product gives us 0, 8.4, and negative 0 0.012. Now let's check to make sure these make sense. So what we're saying is that wheel 1 Okay. Wheel 1 has rotated 0.9 radians and wheel 2 has rotated 0.5 radians. So wheel 1 turned farther than wheel 2. So we would expect it to move in this direction but also be turning a little bit. So delta xr is 0 which fits with our no sliding constraint. The robot can't move in the xr direction. 
delta yr is 8.4 and delta theta is negative 0.012 so that's a rotation in this direction so these numbers make sense so it passes that check now that we have delta psi r we're able to get our theta that we're going to use to transform this vector from the robot frame to the inertial frame so that theta k minus is just the sum of the previous theta which was pi by six and one half of delta theta so one half of negative 0 0.012 so we end up with 0.5176 for our theta k minus and that's the value that we use for our rotation matrix and finally we can come to the equation that we're going to use to estimate our current position so psi i here k is one is equal to psi i at k minus one or psi i at zero plus delta psi i one and that's what we have here this is the previous value so psi i at times zero plus the inverse rotation matrix given this angle that we found here so given theta k minus we'll compute the rotation matrix and find its inverse and we multiply that by delta psi r at time one so eight or 0, 8.4, and negative 0 0.012. And we end up with 32.8, negative 243, and 0 0.512. And this is our current estimate for the robot position in the inertial frame. So we see that we are a little closer. Our x coordinate has decreased, which, you know, makes sense. We're kind of moving in this direction. Our y coordinate has increased which makes sense we're going up this way and theta well you we can't really tell it's not too obvious from this fraction and this but anyway theta has decreased so we've been turning in the clockwise direction so that was an example of using the odometry equation given the robot parameters and the wheel positions at time at two successive times